Hey guys, welcome back to another Captain's Log. I'm Captain Foley, and today we're going to do something kind of special, I guess. Uh, it's something you guys have kind of been asking for for a little bit. I'm going to go through some of my collection, talk about some of the pieces, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. If there's anything you see around me during this, uh, I will be moving to the other room as well. Uh, anything collection wise that you want me to specifically talk about put that in the comments below and I'll see if I can get to that in a future episode uh, I don't have time to talk about it all because I do have quite a large collection so uh, one thing I do want to start off with though what would Captain Kirk do all Starfleet officers must suffer if they don't how will they ever find out who they truly are uh, and this is the main theme of this episode. I want to talk about positivity and negativity a little bit. Um, we all go through hard times. We all have a lot of negativity. There's been a lot on my plate the last few days. I've kind of been stressed out. But, again, how do we grow if we don't have that kind of conflict or stress? And things can always be worse, is how I like to look at it. Um, I'm going to close out with another quote at the end of the captain's log. But we'll hold off on that for now. But I want you to think about that, guys. Um, yeah, there's sometimes a lot of negativity in the world, a lot of negativity in your life, and a lot of things that are there to try to tear you down. Um, especially when you're on YouTube and you have people commenting from all over the internet, a lot of it's negative. And as we've discussed before, it's those, you can get 90, 95 positive comments and one negative one. And which one do you remember? Which one sticks in your craw? It's that negative one that's trying to beat you down and break you down. You can't let people do that um, to you. I know it's a cliche message, but I wanted to get that out there. A lot of times when I start these captain's logs, I'm not in the mood to do them. I'm having a bad day or whatever, but talking to you guys makes me feel better. I didn't want to do this one today necessarily, but I thought why not show off some of my collection, talk about some of the stuff that I really like and give you guys something to enjoy uh the fact that you guys enjoy watching this content really helps me deal with my anxiety and depression it makes me feel like i'm actually contributing something uh that people actually care about so i just wanted to get that out there and like i said there's always a brighter day there's always things to look forward to no matter how bad the situation looks it could always be worse and it'll always be it could always be better. We can't be perfect. We can't have everything we want. Um, so I want you guys to understand that and to, to know that no matter what, just look forward to the future. And that's one of the things that Star Trek, I think in its message, ideally tells us. We need to focus on the future and the positivity and the human spirit and have, that it'll overcome all obstacles. Um, so don't be discouraged by things that go wrong in your life. Don't be discouraged by the negativity. It's, that's like, it's kind of hypocritical because at the same time I get so discouraged and I get upset. I focus on those negative things. Um, but I want to let you guys know that all the advice I've been given over the years, uh, all the life lessons I've learned is things get better. Um, it's not always going to be as bad as you think it is. There's always a brighter day. Um, but anyway, enough of that. You guys already know that. You already know that I'm here for you guys. If you ever want to talk, you can private message me at any time. I have no problems talking to you guys. I love talking to you guys. Uh, so, and you guys are there for, for me and for Samuel and for Trek Yards. Um, recently we did our I'm Sorry video because uh, Samuel had the laptop stolen on his way back from Mission Canada, which lost some of our footage. Again, a very negative thing. And I didn't find out about it for like a month and a half because Samuel was trying to mitigate the damage. He was trying to, you know, get some of the content that was on the laptop specifically that was lost back somehow. He was looking, talking to the airport, talking to the police, you know, try, looking through the lost and founds at the airport, uh, having them do their 
you know, checks and see what they, if anything's been turned in. So he was very stressed about it at first. He didn't want to tell me I was in a bad place because I just put, had to put my dog down and, you know, he didn't want to add to that stress. So I understand that. When he did tell me, it was a kick to the gut because we had filmed some fantastic footage at Ticonderoga um, as part of that, uh, including an interview with Doug Drexler and James Cauley, which is now lost forever. Um, and a lot of stuff on the sets, a lot of skits that we did, a lot of things for the captain's logs, um, with me on the bridge introducing the captain's log, things like that. So it was a big kick to the gut and it lasted probably a day, a day and a half. And then I started to, you know, realize it's not a bad, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, we are going to be going back to Ticonderoga, as you guys might have heard. Doug Drexler and Michael and Denise Okuda will be there uh, end of June. Um, so we're thinking of going back there for that to get to talk to Michael and Denise Sakuda. Um, we have talked to them a few times via email and stuff. They're very busy people. They're aware of the show. Um, they're good friends with Doug. Doug talks about us all the time to them. And uh, so they are aware of the show, but they're just too busy to really be on it. But we're thinking if we go down then, we'll get a chance to interview them with Doug. And also, you know, once they get to know us personally, I'm sure they'll be more open to actually coming on the show and uh, talking to us and providing some great content for you guys. So, and then when we're down there also, we can refilm a lot of the stuff that we lost with better lighting um, and better sound quality. We want to buy little clip on mics. Um, so the sound quality is way better. And the, the set was lit for the tours. So it was very dark in certain areas. And uh, watching the footage back, Samuel said that, yeah, we can do this a little bit better. So I'm looking forward to that. So there's a positive spin on this. We can refilm all that stuff better than we did the first time. Better quality, better content for you guys. And um, But yeah, I was really looking forward to seeing all that stuff that we had filmed on the, on the set. I got a lot of stuff on my phone for my captain's logs and stuff that is still here. It's still available. Um, so it's not all lost. Our Q&As that we'd filmed here, some of them we still have video for. Um, where Samuel and me are sitting behind the desk here answering your questions. Others is just audio, but that's okay. We have all the audio because it was recorded on my computer. Uh, so we have all of the Q&As available for you guys that we're editing together with pictures and stuff. And it's actually going to be a different kind of format, so it might be kind of nice. Uh, so again, a good thing came out of it. Uh, so that's basically the heart of this whole episode. Uh, bad things happen, but you can always see the good in things. So also... James Colley is adding a lot to the set. They've replaced the roof on the transporter um, room or the transporter pad. They, they're they working on finishing the engineering room, what, putting up the big power things on the one side. Um, so it'll actually be a better, better tour, better videos in the future. Um, and that'll be coming up in June. That's actually one year anniversary of our Mission America trip. So we're actually really looking forward to it. It's going to all tie in beautifully. And uh, we... You know, it's not it's not super expensive for Samuel to fly over here. He can spend, um, he can stay at my place, uh, so that mitigates a lot of that cost. Uh, gets gets rid of it. We don't have to worry about hotels and stuff. We do for when we go down to Ticonderoga, but it's just for like two days, so it's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the flight over here is not that expensive. We're not going to ask you guys to to help us with that. We may do another uh, Indiegogo for that campaign, but it's basically just to buy clip-on mics, um, like two standy um, spotlight things so that we can get better lighting in certain situations. So not super expensive, plus we'll have a lot of perks and stuff. And that's the other good thing about the, the Mission Canada trip. You got a lot of perks out of it. All the perks got mailed out. Everybody got what they asked for. Um, we got Andrew Probert to sign a bunch of stuff. Uh, Samuel saw him before he came to Ticonderoga. So it's still a lot of positive stuff comes from things that are negative. Um, it would have been better if the laptop hadn't been stolen we could have had all that footage plus still get more in the future that's fine I understand that but there's kind of like this curse around Ticonderoga for us because the first time we went for Mission America while we were on the train there literally an hour and a half two hours before we arrived the guidelines from CBS dropped for fan films so when we got there everything was locked down they didn't want us to film they didn't want us to do anything James Colley was in a really bad mood that day the next day was better we got to interview James we got a bunch of interviews with him some of which have been released, others still haven't been edited um, or released yet for you guys. So there's still a lot of content from that. 
uh, but we couldn't film what we wanted to the first time. Second time we got to film it, we had free reign of the place um, for most of the weekend and we spent hours on set filming. Um, but like we said, all that footage was lost. So it's kind of like the curse of Ticonderoga. So hopefully third time is a charm. We'll get it all hashed out and everything will be good. So there you go, guys. All right, so first thing I want to show you guys is this fantastic tin. Uh, this, of course, got the Enterprise on the front. This is like a lunch tin. Tin. Uh, we've got Romulan Bird of Prey from TOS with the Enterprise in the background there and another Bird of Prey there. And on the back, we got a Klingon D7 with the little Enterprise in the background. Now on the back, we got Spock, the classic picture of Spock, which is also a model kit, firing at like a snake dragon under here. But there's this cardboard here. Uh, this just tells you about the model that's in this tin. Uh, and you can make all three, well, you can't make all three. You can make one of these versions of the ship, the production version or the cage or um, where no man has gone before, uh, the first and second pilots. So that's cool. You open it up and there's a model in there. Now, one thing that's cool about this is it comes with a collectible sticker, which is fantastic, which I actually didn't even know about until I decided to do this for you guys today to show you guys. Um, so I thought I'd take a look through it. But uh, so yeah, I got a collectible sticker out of the deal. I didn't even know it. There you go, another positive thing. Uh, now it comes with decals, of course. Um, what have we got here? But uh, my ship in Star Trek uh, Online, my Connie, is called the USS Executioner. Uh, it's a TOS Constitution class ship. And I got my buddy um, Jim, or my, you guys might know him better as JBot from JBot Decals. He did up a decal sheet for me to customize my ship to make it look like it does in game. We've got the NCC 612674 USS Executioner registry number. Um, plus, because of when I first got my ship, it was early on in Star Trek Online, we still had to pay for it. So I got the uh, special edition collector's edition or whatever and it came with a constitution class when nobody else could have them now everybody can have one of course but um, so I got the constitution class and in the customization section you could make the hull like a gray color and put like striping on it and really it looked really cool and it was fantastic for the longest time and then I decided I'd upgrade my interiors to a TOS interior as soon as I did that as soon as I got the TOS bridge and the TOS interior on my ship the outer hull it went back to the, the pearl white and you couldn't change it. It was kind of irritating because the ship looked really fantastic with the gray and black striping. It was a, you know, I have a whole story for it, special operations ship, blah, 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 blah. But um, now with Agents of Yesterday, they've changed it. You can customize it again. Uh, you can't get the same striping packages or whatever, but it does look a lot cooler now again. So I might need to get the decals updated, but I got a bunch of striping and stuff and uh, grid lines because I like the grid lines on it. I got some going to be grid lining or putting the deflector array on the um, secondary hull as well, much like the refit. Uh, but I got all of the striping I need from JBot to do that. So that's going to be a model kit that I'm going to be building uh, sometime in the future. Uh, I do need to get back into model building and put the model the model builds on this site because that's how I started this YouTube channel. And if you guys ever want to go back to the early videos, uh, you'll see how this channel started. It started very, very small, just me building models and showing off my collection. Which leads to the, what we're going to be doing today is showing off some of the collections. So hopefully you guys will really enjoy that. So that's the one thing I wanted to show you guys. I'm really excited to build the USS Executioner. You can see the the patches here. Uh, this is done by Kyle Schnatz Jr. I've got my... That was originally the, the one we used for the Trek Yards um, com badge. That was originally I designed that for the Executioner because all the TOS ships had their own emblem. So you'll see this in every episode. NX or NCC 612674, the USS Executioner, and the comm badge up there. And of course, the Trek Yards comm badges that we've designed and uh, provided for our Indiegogo campaigns are that comm badge. Um, Samuel will be doing one of his own because this Trek Yard story is, of course, I'm the TOS captain. He's like Voyager era, but he wants to design his own comm badge at some point, And I think that'll be fantastic to add. But right now, this is the Trek Yards comm badge. Uh, they, they are available during the Indiegogo campaigns. And once we get the store up and running on Trek Yards, which we plan on doing this year, I know I've said that for a while now, but it's something that's in the works. And uh, 
we, we you know we'll be selling a few things like signed prints by the designers both large and small prints uh we'll be doing uh com badges mugs patches hats t-shirts that kind of thing so look forward to that coming i was gonna say soon but ish coming ish um but anyway i want to move over now to the other bookcase in this room um got to mind the clutter a little bit this is kind of i got a large collection and three kids taking up all the bedrooms upstairs once they move out i can clear this out and like actually have a good display area to, to put this stuff up but it's gonna be a little cluttered over there but bear with me okay guys so we'll start up here we got some of my empty boxes for my electronic movie phaser uh klingon art of war book d7 battle cruiser some star wars books transformers vault stuff like that got a klingon disruptor obviously uh, Starfleet logbook there, a couple model boxes, Star Trek Next Generation 365, we've got the TOS one as well. Here we've got some Skeletrex figures, um, some old PC games, and this is stacked too deep for books. I got a ton of um, Star Trek novels most of which I haven't actually read, which is a bad thing. This is my case for my communicator, my Bluetooth communicator. Um, got the IDW comics. This one's a limited edition, was only available at Fan Expo. And uh, Shatner was there, so I had him sign it. So there's not many of these books, period, and then signed as well. It's kind of interesting. Got the Next Generation collection up there. Uh, Star Trek The Complete Comic Book Collection. This is every comic ever made on disc. It's quite a few years old, so it's not everyone, obviously. Um, but I'm just dropping things left and right here. But as you can see, there's books behind there. Uh, they're all Star Trek books and some fantastic ones as, at that. So Let's move down to the next shelf. Of course, we've got more novels in the back there. Tons of them. Uh, a bunch of older ones from libraries and stuff that I got at good prices. The Spock figure with the Horda. Got my Metal Earth Enterprise kit, which I've done a, a video on, uh, a review of it. This here is from one of the models behind my other desk. I just have it standing up right now, but that's the stand. We got the TOS trading cards there. Here's the phaser case uh, for the... One company phaser and here's some of my stamps and coinage from the Canadian mint and then you got the $20 coin and again some comics um, this book the Star Trek vault is absolutely fantastic hope you guys aren't getting seasick here Probably a better way to do this, and I'm sure Samuel is yelling at me right now. But there's a bunch more of the novels, and this Star Trek Vault book is absolutely fantastic. It's got a bunch of memorabilia and stuff in it. Might do a video exclusively uh, going through that book because there's a bunch of cool stuff in there. Um, but we're not going to do that today. I'm getting eager to go into the other room here, so. And show you guys what I got here. So let's just put this stuff back. And like I said, if there's anything that specifically you want me to talk about that you've seen, even if it's one of the novels that you see, uh, one of the titles that you want me to like read the back of, or oh, you might be wondering what this is. This is my this is my uh, Halloween mummy, full size latex mummy that I've painted and. And then back there is just a bunch of junk, just a bunch of wrapping paper and stuff. But like I said, it's cluttered and messy. So again, here's some more comics and some hard hardback books, some Star Trek manga, some Star Trek audio books, Star Trek Legacy PC game, my Ambassador Class box. Here's my TOS 365 book. One of my Starship spotters. Um, the little stick-ons Star Trek thing, my Starfleet Command manual. Um, here's more stamps and stuff from the Canadian Mint. 
plus uh, all the stamps from the U.S. that I've got. Ships of the Line, which have signed by Rick, John, and Doug, which was fantastic. That's the new one. And then the old one, of course, is right here. Um, so yeah, this one isn't two layers deep. It's just one layer. And then moving down here, this is where all my... That's really dusty. <laughs> my Transformers, my Star Wars um, book is. On board the Enterprise. There's just a bunch of sh uh, stuff here. Uh, the General War, brief history of the General War, uh, which was given to me by my good friend Truby Howard. Thank you, Truby. I know you watch these, so. Wow, these are dusty. My autobiography of James T. Kirk. Um, this is Star Trek and Planet of the Apes crossover. And again, some Transformers novels, a lot of Transformers comics. And down here we got some of the Star Wars stuff, Star Wars books. And again, more Star Trek. There's always Star Trek finding its way in here. Um, so that is the bookcase collection that's in here in the laundry room because I have no other room for it. Um, so that's that. And here guys, here's some of the uh, rest of the collection. Again, not all of it. It's scattered around and about. I'll be showing a few things of this off today. And like I said, please guys, if you see anything you want me to specifically talk about, um, Put it in the comments section and we will take a peek on a future captain's log. Again, a lot of stuff that's not Star Trek as well. I do have more interests. A lot of Star Wars, Transformers. Again, a lot more books in here. Phasers up there, a bunch of stuff on this wall. I've got my 3D chess set, which I do know how to play, by the way. A bunch of other stuff. Always cool stuff in here, and um, yeah, guys, I'm going to set up the tripod now and show you one or two pieces. Okay, guys, sorry for all the jitteriness and the shaking, and I hope that didn't make you sick. I don't want to apply stabilization to this video, I don't think, because it usually ruins the quality. Um, so I apologize for that. There's got to be a better way to do that. I want to get one of those gimbals, but it's like 75 bucks, um, which, just, which stabilizes the picture and stuff. Um, so, and this video was very washed out with the L cars, but so I apologize. First thing I wanted to show you was one of my favorite pieces in my collection. And that's my 25th anniversary TOS Enterprise from the Franklin Mint. Uh, things might get a little distorted on here. As you can see, I've got the wide angle lens on so you can see more of the room. Um, so we'll start off with the stand on this. It's got the Star Trek logo in silver because it's the 25th anniversary. This is from the Franklin Mint. Um, and they do some fantastic pieces. This is one of my favorite enterprises. Not TOS Enterprise, but models or it's die cast metal um because of the wide angle lens it does look like things are kind of distorted and the engines are droopy but they're not they're perfectly spot on uh this one's got gold electroplate on the sensor dish i've also added some embellishments to it all these dark spots these are like a nice metallic blue in there these are black um all the windows i've filled in because it was just plain white which looked all right, but I prefer to make things look better. I did the impulse engines. And this has the little shuttle bay that comes out. And you got a little TOS Type F shuttlecraft there. Again, I did the windows on it. Um, make them look better. Obviously, not to scale. It's a little bit big, but that's fine. And speaking of not to scale, there's this part. Comes off and you got the bridge in there. which isn't super, super detailed. Um, but there are things on the consoles and buttons and displays and it's not too, too bad. Go to the front, you've got a, a view screen there. 
nothing on the view screen and it's wide widescreen view screen which is awesome so and of course we got the bridge facing forward um, which is the big debate does it face forward or is it offset um, to match the turbo lift up at the back of the ship where the turbo lift part is right there again this is not to scale the bridge does not take up the entire saucer a lot of people seem to think that it did but uh yeah actually how to get dusty in there it's not a good seal i guess so i need to clean this but this is one of my absolute all-time favorite pieces of trek collectibles that i have franklin mint did some amazing work back in the day um, a lot a lot of the franklin mint stuff and i've showed off a lot of this stuff in previous videos when i started this channel like i said i did model builds and I highlighted pieces from my collection. So uh, if you go back to the early videos uh, on this channel, you will see a lot of that stuff. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to review it again now that we've got more of a fan base and a lot of people to enjoy it. But you can go back and check these things out on your own as well, guys. So do that because I've got a lot of content um, built up. So that's one of the first pieces I wanted to show you, my 25th anniversary Franklin Mint Enterprise. So next up, we'll do some small things. Um, this I got um, ooh, 30 years ago, probably. Um, it's a little Starfleet Academy graduation ring. And this I got at a Paramount Park. They, there's a amusement park in Toronto called Canada's Wonderland. It's got the UFP symbol there. And they used to have, used to be um, Paramount themed, obviously. Uh, so a lot of Paramount movies uh, and things like that. They had a Star Trek store, a whole store at this, th at this theme park dedicated to Star Trek. And they had characters dressed up as Vulcans, as Romulans, as Ferengi, as Klingons. It was awesome. Um, so this was one of the pieces that I got there. Um, I do wear it occasionally. Got the Delta on that side, the UFP symbol on that side. And it says uh, Starfleet Academy around the, the jewel. Um, Better than the ones that uh, Scotty has in the new movie, I dare say. Um, so I, I want to put it on, but it's a little bit tight. So there you go. Graduated Starfleet, I'm telling you. Also, in 2013, me and my wife went to uh, the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas. We also got married in, in Las Vegas. Uh, we got married in a helicopter above the Strip at night which was fantastic. We didn't have a Star Trek wedding, don't ask. We did get a bunch of uh, great stuff from the Star Trek convention though. Chase Masterson uh, was selling her jazz CD um, that she just released and uh, she gave us a signed copy of it as a wedding gift um, and a few other things. We got a few autographs and stuff uh, as gifts, so that was fantastic. But it was also Deep Space Nine's 20th anniversary. So we got the 20th anniversary Deep Space Nine coin I gotta say too, this is where I met my friend Noel, my good buddy Noel, uh, who's a cosplayer, does fantastic cosplay work and the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet in the world. Um, he's become a really good friend of mine since. A lot of this collection actually, um, he's got for me. Um, he's one day showed up with a car full of boxes full of stuff um, that he's collected over the years and wanted to give to me. So the other side of the coin has the Star Trek uh, it says start date August 6th to 11th, 2013, Star Trek, uh, Las Vegas convention. Yes. I thought it said something about years, but there you go. It's hard for this thing to focus. But anyway, two more little cool pieces from the collection that you guys might not see when you're just looking around. Now, as mentioned in the other room, um, I was playing Star Trek Online since the beginning, and this is what I want to show you, the collector's edition uh, of Star Trek Online. Nice little box. You open it up, you got a little Starfleet pin there um, from Star Trek Online. Of course. Uh, and this was, like I said, when you still had to pay. So it came with three guest passes, which has the Excalibur class ship on it. I can't really get it without a reflection there, but there you go. So 
three Star Trek Online guest passes. There's the codes if you guys want them. Don't know how good they are to you, but... So yeah, as part of this um, collectible set, you also got, you got the pin, you got this book, The Art of Star Trek Online. You also got the Constitution class, as I said, and the Red Matter um, generator or whatever. Um, so here's the actual game disc in the back of the book. And then, as it promises, it's a, a book about the art of Star Trek Online. There's notes in the back. A bunch of different weapons. Alien weapons. Planet scenes. Interiors. Cardassian interiors. Starfleet interiors. The different kinds of... Uh, Armor, utility armor, energy armor, Jem'Hadar, Gorn, Nausicaan, group shot of everybody. Smile, look at, ah. It's funny because I held it up to my iPhone and it focused on all those faces. Um, just some other fantastic art from the early days of Star Trek Online. Uh, and since then, of course, we've got a lot of updates, a lot of additions. I've had the distinct pleasure of talking to Thomas Maroney and a few of the Star Trek Online staff and talk to them on the show, uh, learn about how they do this kind of stuff, and it's all fantastic. There's the Excalibur again, some Birds of Prey. That's the ship they were really pimping out in the early days. The new refit version. So, there you go. That's one of the things that I... Wanted to show you a little piece of Star Trek online history, if you will. Um, yeah, it came in this really nice gift box, um, which included which includes the book, the pen, and the guest passes, the red matter, and the Constitution class before anybody else could get them. And my wife was the one that bought me this. Um, she knows how much I love Constitution class ships, and she... I complained that you couldn't get one, and she went out and got me this because she's fantastically awesome. So there you go, the Star Trek Online Collector's Edition. So something else I wanted to show off to you guys, which really isn't a real piece of Star Trek tech, but it's an interesting piece nonetheless, is this. It's got a science logo on it. Uh, I used to have, as a kid, I, I always wanted to have Star Trek props and stuff that were it weren't readily readily available at the time. Uh, there wasn't a lot of the Playmate stuff in that when I was a kid. So uh, this, I put a sticker on. Now this thing's interesting. It's like uh, an alarm clock kind of thing, but you hit the button and the thing slides up. And it's got like a readout display there. Um, it's got buttons here. You can check the temperature, uh, to change it to from 12 to 24 hour time, and the alarm set and the alarm on off button. There's buttons along the bottom, so it's meant to go sideways. But I always thought it was so cool and such a great piece of... I, I collected a lot of techie things. I like techie things, like fancy neon lights and you know, plasma balls and you know, the, the Borg light that we got down here that I got sent to set to uh, voice activation um, and things like that. So this is something that I thought was really cool and really spoke to Star Trek to me because it's like a futuristic tricorder almost. Um, so I got the scientific logo or the, the engineering logo on it, sorry. And uh, at the back, <laughs> I put it on a sticker for a uh, um, isolinear chip. It's just really cool the way it opens, and it could be like a new piece of Star Trek tech, I think. I like a, a tricorder scanning around. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So not really a real piece of Star Trek tech, but something that I created as a kid and thought you guys might get a kick out of to see, so just to see how my brain works. But very cool, and uh, it's been in my collection. It'll always be in my collection. I really wish that the circle wasn't around that, but... It kind of fits in a way. It's kind of like the next step towards the motion picture era. It was, was my thinking. You know, this was after TOS. It's like phase two kind of thing. So, into the twisted mind of Captain Foley. I'm sorry you had to come along. And here's another one of the electro devices that I have. 
I love this thing. <laughs> but yeah, I got the Borg kind of electrical thing there. And it's like, v it's just the ship's running into V'ger and boom. But yeah, so anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this kind of quick peek at the collection. Anything you guys are interested in me talking about, feel free to ask away. And I'll do my best to do that for you guys. Um, yeah, she's not She-Hulk. She's an Orion. It's a long story, don't ask. Um, even my little hand-painted switch plate cover, cover there from forever ago. But anyway, guys, that's the collection, some of it. Um, I will show more off in the future, of course, and looking forward to hearing what you guys want to see and uh, what should be next as far as that goes. So keep in mind, there's lots to look at, lots to see, lots to discuss for the future. And let's not forget some of this stuff as well over here. And she's not lit up, guys. She's not making that whining, irritating nacelle motor sounds. But, of course, I am going to light it up because you guys want to see it. And if Samuel hates it when I do this, he hates this sound in the videos, but whatever. i got to fix my deflector. It's getting a little bit loose. It's meant to be adjustable because it does move. Um, but it is a little loose. I'm going to have to take it in the other room and... Uh, do some surgery on it soon. That'll be its own separate video, I think. But there you have it, guys. TOS Enterprise. All it up. I love showing it off every chance I get, so... Hopefully you guys enjoy it, too. There you go. Let's get back to the captain's desk, shall we? So there you have it, guys. A brief look at a few things in my collection and the general collection. There is more. There's a lot packed up still. Like I said, I don't have enough room to display this stuff. Um, some of it's scattered over here on my desk. A lot of it's behind me here. Lots of stuff around here. And But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I sure enjoy showing it to you guys, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts and your questions and anything you'd like to see uh, in regards to that collection as well. Because, um, like I said, I do like showing it off. I don't mean to brag, but I have spent years and years and years collecting this stuff. I want somebody to get enjoyment out of it besides myself. So, um, and please keep in mind my, my little talk about negativity and how there's always something more positive around the corner hopefully this has been a positive spin to your day and has added something to your life to your day made you feel better made you a little bit of escapism for a little while so that you could just kind of get away from your life and just enjoy something else and i hope i've achieved that for you guys and looking forward again like i said to hearing all your thoughts so let's close with another quote about negativity um, and positivity and stuff from what would captain kirk do a strong leader knows how to find the light. Nothing monumental or amazing, but you need to be able to find the good in every situation, um, as bleak as it might look. Um, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There's always a brighter day ahead. It's always darkest before the dawn. All that crap. It's all, it all is actually true positivity messages. And I want you to keep them in mind um, so that you guys are happy and yeah, take care of yourself guys. Until next time, I'm Captain Foley and thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye guys.